Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of Homefront The Revolution. I played it on the PS4, it's also available on the Xbox One and PC. So first things first, I'm not going to do this review in the normal way I do reviews, I'm going to mix it up just a bit for this review. So let's start with the good parts. The audio in this game works pretty well. I didn't have any major issues with missing sound effects or sound effects not working. The sound effects fit well with what you're doing on screen and with what's going on in the environment. The graphics were pretty good. They weren't as bad as what I saw in the beta, but that having been said, it still wasn't the most beautiful game I've ever seen. Next up are the controls. They're actually pretty solid in this game. I was really impressed by that because in the beta, they were shit. Admittedly, there were a few times where I felt they weren't as precise as I would have liked, but overall they worked well and they did what I needed them to for the most part. Homefront The Revolution has some concepts pretty similar to what you would see in something like Far Cry, where you have to go and liberate zones and you do it block by block in this game. And then lastly for the good, you can find an arcade machine in the game and play some levels from Time Splitter 2. I loved that game. It actually holds up surprisingly well. Now for the bad. We'll start with the story being complete shit. It's predictable, unbelievable, and just boring. According to the game, North Korea was so technologically advanced that they were like one of the wealthiest nations in the world, and they were able to buy up a vast majority of the US debt. I get that it's supposed to be an alternate reality storyline, but... North Korea being the technological superpower of the world, that's just fucking stupid and wildly unbelievable, and it starts the game off on a horrible note. But then to add on to the poor story, you've got a lot of really poor voiceover work. Most of it's mediocre, except for the doctor who, who fucking cares what his name is, quite frankly. Every scene he's in is supposed to be like really dramatic and showing you how this war is hitting home and the damage it's doing to the civilians and the people dying, but it's really, really hard to take seriously because the voiceover work is so terrible for him that it just loses all gravity. That voice actor and the character, having them be that person for those serious scenes just shits on them intensely. Now, I mentioned some of the gameplay mechanics being similar to that of Far Cry, how you go from area to area, recapturing it. But the problem with this game is that it's way too easy to recapture an area. And it gets really repetitive and boring so fast. Another shit mechanic is the fact that the game doesn't do a good job of letting you know when you're taking damage. So it's very easy to take enough damage to die without you even noticing that it's happening. It really detracts from the action because you have to be so focused on your health bar because the game's not doing a good job of immersing you when you're taking damage. Then you've got the frame rate issues. This game has an inconsistent frame rate. When you're just running around, it can be somewhat smooth. It's still not super smooth. Or it can start to get really laggy and just kind of look really ugly. But when you're on a motorcycle, it gets even worse. I mean, traveling 100 meters, it just starts to lag like you wouldn't believe. And some of these maps are like 500 meters across. So traveling that distance with it just chugging like that is miserable. Honestly, it got to the point where I just started running everywhere because the frame rate didn't drop as badly. The frame rate was so bad when I was riding the motorcycles that it honestly made me a little nauseous at times. And on top of that, you have a lot of the glitches I noticed while I was playing the beta. You've got people sinking into the floors. You've got people sticking their heads through doors. You've also got floating objects. And every now and then, when you get off your motorcycle, you get flung 30 feet forward or backwards. Now there is also a multiplayer to this game, and to put it simply, it's basically like playing the campaign just in co-op. Surprisingly enough, I had fewer frame rate issues playing the multiplayer than I did while playing the campaign. That having been said, I didn't really get to play much of the multiplayer because anytime I tried, nobody seemed to be on. I don't want to talk about this game any longer, it was painful to complete. I'll say it wasn't the worst game I've ever played, but it sure as hell wasn't a good game. 
So I say skip this shit. It's not worth even looking at. Like, avoid eye contact with this game if you can. I hate saying that because I honestly did enjoy the first home front. Yeah, it was far from a perfect game, but I saw a lot of potential in it. And this game is just a steaming pile of shit. It's a horrible sequel. I wish I could say I was surprised by this, but I played the beta and the beta was complete shit. So unfortunately, I didn't expect a lot from this game. Okay, so in the comments below, why don't you tell me if there's a game out there that you're just dying for a sequel from. I'm just really hoping Mirror's Edge Catalyst doesn't let me down. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share or subscribe. Have a good one.